Hey y'all, happy Black History Month. My name is Ola and I am the creator and director of a fun social art project called the Free Black Women's Library that features a collection of over 4,000 books written by Black women. Now, part of what steers and guides the work I do with the library is the legacy and work of Black librarians throughout history, throughout time. And what I would like to do in this video is share with you three Black librarians whose work kind of serves as a beacon for me and the work that I do. Um, I consider them to be like spiritual mentors or ancestral guides or spirit guides in my head. But anywho, let's get started. Let's get into it. Now, the first woman I'm going to talk about is a woman named Dorothy Porter. Now, Dorothy Porter is a Gemini. Um, she was born in 1904 in Virginia. And part of her claim to fame is the creation of the Moreland Spring Arn Research Center, which is located on Howard University's campus. Now, she worked there for 43 years, building out a collection that started in a one-room study and grew to become an epic, iconic, legendary institution that people all over the world look to for their research, for their scholarly support, for their studies. This place is amazing, y'all. She thought of the archive as a space for knowledge creation and collected books relating to Black life from all over the world. So her collection was global. Now, one of my favorite stories about Porter's legacy is that she actually decolonized the standard practice of library cataloging and categorization. At this time, there was something called the Dewey system that was used by most libraries. And there were only two categories that black books could fall under. The first was slavery and the second was colonization. And she was like, not feeling that because of course, as we know, blackness is so much more than those two things. So she created a whole new system for classifying books that included art, anthropology, commerce, economics, and so on and so forth. So it's thanks to her that some of the systems that librarians use today in their libraries exist. Hoorah, hooray for Dorothy. Now, she was not only a librarian, she was also a writer, a mentor, a curator, and a cultural worker who traveled the world, as I said, collecting materials for Black scholarly consumption. Now, the second person I would like to talk to you about is a woman named Mame Agnew Clayton. Now, Mame was a Leo born in Van Buren, Arkansas, and she was the founder of a space that was originally called the Western States Black Research Center. Now, later on, it became the Mame A. Clayton Library and Museum after her son took it over and they named it after her. For 45 years, she collected over 30,000 rare and out of print books that related to the history and culture of Black people in the U.S. Her collection started in her garage, y'all, and it went on to become an everlasting institution. Now, not only did she collect books, but she also collected films, documents, photos, artifacts, and works of art. Now, I'm going to go on to discuss the third person so that my video is not too long. I want to talk to you about Molly Houston Lee, a Capricorn born in Columbus, Ohio, and the first Black librarian of Raleigh, North Carolina. Now, Molly started at Shaw University, and it was there that she first recognized the need for a Black library. Like, she felt that it was something that the community needed and wanted from the engagements that she was having at Shaw. So it was in 1935, while living in Raleigh that her and some comrades gathered themselves together and met with the mayor and demanded, requested, asked for a black library. And they started it that same year in a storefront with 890 books. Now, a huge chunk of her 38 career as a librarian involves opening and growing this space that is known as the Harrison Public Library. And guess what y'all, that space still exists to this very day. A lot of these spaces, actually all these spaces that I'm mentioning still exist to this very day, hundreds of years, of years later, which I find absolutely amazing. Now, 
the fun thing about the Harrison Public Library is that not only was it a safe space for folks to gather together and learn, but it also provided multiple cultural and social programs, dances, literary society meetups, cotillions, fun stuff for the entire community. And Molly was so determined in making sure that this was a community space that if people couldn't come to the library, she would bring the library to them. You'll see photos of her online visiting people in hospitals and community centers and churches and in their homes with a stack of books. It's a beautiful thing. So this library started, oh, I said that already. This library started with 890 books and so on and so forth. So Black librarians and Black archives are sacred and important. They provide a physical historiography of Black life. They also allow us a portal into our past, present, and future. They are so necessary. And I see the Free Black Women's Library as a tool that pushes back against the systematic devaluation of Black womanhood. Shout out to Bell Hooks. I am so grateful for the love and the legacy of these Black women librarians that I've shared with you. There is so much more out there. Like, do you know who else worked in the library? Audrey Lord. Do you know who else worked in the library? Toni Morrison. Do you know who else worked in the library? Zora Neale Hurston. Hello, all the cool kids worked as librarians or archivists or their book collectors or their readers or their critical thinkers or just basically seekers and gatherers of knowledge and information. So, hey, do me a favor, drop the name of your favorite librarian in comments. If they're on Instagram, tag them so we can give them some love because the work they do is so valuable and so potent for our communities. And also, hmm, let me know the title of your favorite book written by a Black woman that you have in your book collection. Now, I wanna thank Ebony and Erica so much for inviting me to be a part of this incredible series. I am honored and I love y'all. And yeah, wishing everyone a happy 2022 and I'll see y'all at the library. Bye.